Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, a couple of weeks ago, we were working on our Lucas uh, horizontal boring mill. This is a model, what, 31 uh, precision horizontal boring mill made around 1918. And this has been a project, kind of been waiting to get started on the shop for some time. We brought it in here. It's probably been almost two years ago now. Uh, did some work to it. Uh, as far as just cosmetic, we started cleaning it up and getting it painted. But I got a project coming up we're going to need this on, so I'm kind of been doing a few little things to try to get it where we can use it for that upcoming project. And uh, the first thing we had to do was replace the motor on this thing. And we did a video talking about that, redoing the motor mounts, and uh, kind of ready to continue on with that. I will say that since the last video, uh, I did come in here and get a motor starter. Uh, working on this uh, machine and I didn't shoot a video on it. I've actually done a video on, on how to wire up a motor starter in the past. You can dig around in my, my older videos if you're interested in seeing that. It was just tight quarters back there. I really couldn't get a camera in. I will say that that um, when this motor or when this machine came to me, it had the old 10 horsepower motor on there that was wired for 440 and uh, at 440 volts, you're basically drawing twice the amps that you are, or excuse me, half the amps that you are at 220 volts. You draw twice the amps at 220. So we doubled the amperage on this machine. And because of that, I had to step up to a larger size motor starter to be able to handle it. So the motor starter that was on here was a NEMA size one. And uh, it was an old motor starter. It worked just fine. But going to 220 volts to keep everything up to spec, I had to size it up to a, a, a size two, a little bit larger size motor starter. So I had to source one of those. I uh, ended up finding one from a friend of mine. He had me one that I was able to get. So uh, I got all that hooked up and going. But this motor is working. Uh, it's just an on-off. Basically, that motor starter, all it does is uh, when you click the button, it engages a coil. It uh, starts that motor up and it also has overload protection in there so that you can size it for the particular motor you're running. So if it draw starts drawing too many amps, uh, the motor starter will trip according to the amperage on the motor plate rather than the amperage that you have it hooked into. Now in my shop, most of my machines are running five horsepower or smaller motors. So I pretty much all of my, my three phase circuits that I have in the shop are uh, 20 amp circuits, which is more than adequate for most everything I do. But on this uh, bigger motor here, I've got a 30 amp circuit. Fortunately, this machine's sitting right over here by a panel breaker box back here. So I just basically ran a 30 amp circuit right out of there, three phase 30 amp. And uh, we plug it in right here beside the machine, no problem at all. So, uh, but in that motor starter, You've got that overload protection. This motor does not draw 30 amps. It draws more than 20 amps. I can't, I think it was 24 amps. I want to say I'd have to look at the motor plate again. So uh, we've got the right size heaters in that motor starter so that whenever it gets to whatever the motor is rated for, it'll trip out basically there and protect your motor, protect your wiring, everything else. So, uh, Let's continue on. I want to get the belts on here. I've got a belt for it. I want to make sure I got the right size before we uh, get too deep into it. So uh, let's try it out first. We'll show you the motor working. So right here, we got a push button starter, uh, basically a start stop button. Uh, the black starts it, the red stops it. That goes to the motor starter that basically engages the coils and then that turns the motor on. So let me plug this thing up. And when we hit the start button, the motor should start. Hit the stop button, motor stops. Just like what we want. All right, uh, what I want to do now is let's get over here and, and see if my belt fits, get the uh, pulley on the motor, and uh, see if we can get this thing wound up. So I got kind of tight quarters back here. I need to pull this yoke off the end of the, the motor. This is basically the clutch that turns it on and off so that we can get the belt on. Um, and I got this big old optical comparator that's in my way. I probably need to just pull the thing out, but I was going to try to work around it, but I think I'm going to have to just pull it out. And let me just say this, guys. If anybody's looking for an optical comparator, I've got one. I'd love to get rid of this thing. It's a great machine. I just, I just don't have a need for it in my shop. I actually uh, thought I had it sold last year, and uh, the guy that was going to get it from me 
some things changed on his end and he was not able to ever come get it picked up. So it is available and I would, uh, I would love to have one. If you know what it is, if you don't know what it is, you probably don't need it. But if you do know what it is and you can use it in your shop, talk to me. I'd love to get this thing out of here and uh, find it a new home where it can get utilized uh, and not just be collecting dust like it is in my shop and be in my way like it is in my shop. Start by moving this toolbox out of the way. And this optical comparator is on wheels. So it will move fairly easily as well. So this machine's designed where there's a lever here on the front. When you pull that in, you can see it pulls in on the yoke up there. And when you come in, it basically engages this pulley is spinning all the time but whenever you engage the clutch it turns this main spindle that drives everything so what i got to do is take this yoke off right here so that i can get that belt up on there because there's no way else to get it up on there right now i've had this off before but i don't remember exactly how i did it i think we take this uh pin out right here that disengages that. And then, let's see, there's a uh, set screw right here. I think this picks up and then we can slide this out. Let me go get a wrench to undo that with. Here we go. There we go. There's just a, there's a set screw over here on the side and that pin goes all the way through and it just rotates on that pin. And now we can slide this off and there's two little ears here that fit up in there in that yoke. So that, now we can get our belt on there. So let's talk a little bit about this uh, pulley and sheave that I've got. So the way that they do these, it's really kind of in ingenious. You got a pulley, has a bore in it, and you got a hub here that fits up on your shaft. And this is a taper. Whenever you, there's three holes here, you line them up. And whenever you tighten this up, pull that up on there, it pulls it up onto this taper and locks this pulley in place. The nice thing is, is that these pulleys, it don't matter what size shaft, your shaft size is determined by this, but these will fit on different shafts. So it's, it's we're kind of a one size fits all type of a deal. So I've got the, the, the hub that fits up on my, my, my motor that I have here. It does have a keyway in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of put that in and we will, I want to start by just kind of figuring approximately where this hub needs to be mounted in here to be lined up properly. And it's going to need to be somewhere right along in there. I'm just going to take a little Sharpie pin back here in the back. Just kind of mark it. It's, it's up on there pretty good. And I think what I'm going to do is instead of putting the belt on the back when I'm going to, I'm going to make it work off of this, these three right here, since I'm not going to, this is a three sheave, this is a six sheave. So I'm going to use these three right here. That's kind of lined up. So, uh, next thing I want to do is go ahead and get my, my little, uh, bolts in here that will tighten this up. Now, one thing I'll, I'll note, if you're not familiar with this type of uh, sheave pulley, if you ever got to take them apart, once you pull it up on that taper, it's really hard to get it off. So if you notice, there's two sets of uh, holes in this. One of them, the bolts just go through. The other ones are threaded. And the idea here is when you tighten it up, you know, you've got a threaded hole that this goes into and that draws it up on there. Whenever you get ready to take it apart, you take these screws out, put them into the uh, 
ones that are threaded and then that be, acts like a jack. You tighten them up and it pushes that hub away and that's how you loosen it up. So you can get them apart later on. Pretty good idea. Basically got little jack screws uh, factored right into this thing. So let's uh, get those three in there and we'll get this started up on the hub and get all three of those started. Take my belt, kind of use it to line these up. Now as I tighten it, it's going to pull this in, so um, I need for it to come out just a little bit. We'll take our wrench and we'll go around this thing and tighten it up on there. I just turn these a couple of turns until it becomes tight. And each time, you see that one's loose again. So we'll just kind of ease it up on there. This is it right here. And I see how our belt's lined up now. It's going to be just right. So I'll start out by making sure all of my bolts are loose here. There's four bolts in this thing, and they are. And on the back, there's a screw, and it basically there's a threaded rod that moves this motor forward and backwards when you turn the screw. That's how you tighten the belt up. I'm just going to use my impact wrench. I need for it to go in. There we go. I'm just going to run it in a little bit. And get it on to the correct. There we go. And I'm going to tighten it up. There we go. Now, I only bought one belt because I wanted to make sure I was getting the right size, but uh, this belt's going to work just fine. If you look, I've got, I'm right in the middle of my adjustment range, so this is actually perfect. I, I nailed the belt size just where I wanted it. So uh, I'm going to run, get a couple more belts and then we'll finish this project up. So I went to the store. I got me a couple more belts. It's actually the next day now, but uh, we want to go ahead and get these fit on here and finish this project up. So start with, I'm going to loosen, loosen that back up so we can get these other belts on here. And Same process as before. Let's see here. Get that one over there in the right groove. Get this one in the right groove up here. And Right, I think we got those on there. Let's see, all right, we got one. There we go. That should be correct there. And now let's tighten our belts back up.
finishing up the tension in back here with just a regular wrench rather than that impact. Just have a little more finer control over things. Get them good and tight. Roll them around. What will happen with these belts is, is you tighten them in one place and the tension is a little bit different depending on where it is. When you roll them around, it kind of evens that tension out. So uh, we'll continue tighten them up here. Now, a lot of people want to use matched belts. Uh, matched belts are sold in sets that are matched at the factory. That was a big deal back a long time ago. Honestly, guys, in today's world, these belts are made to pretty tight tolerances from one to the other. Uh, a lot of people, you can still buy matched belts that are exactly the same length, but honestly, if you, as long as you're getting your belts from the same manufacturer, they're gonna probably be fine just like they are. But uh, I think we got those ready. We'll tighten up the screws over here on the mount, and I think we'll be ready to try this thing out. Put our clutch back together here. So those little forks drop on there like that. Actually, this needs to flip over. 180 degrees looks like. Yeah, that's the right there. We will drop this pin down. There's a flat right here that this set screw goes up against. And get that tightened down. pin here. See that goes down there actually in between captures it. Got a shoulder bolt here. There we go. All right, I'm going to lube everything up and we'll try her out. I'm just going to, I'm not going to fill these oil cups completely up. I'm just going to put a little bit in each one of them. And uh, what I'm using is just some uh, mobile DTE heavy medium, uh, which is a good general purpose oil that you can use on most machines. That's what most um, manuals and stuff are going to call for, generally speaking. So uh, like I said, it's just a good general purpose machine oil for uh, lubricating spindles and gear boxes and you name it. So if you got a manual, you can read them, but if you don't have a manual, this, this is actually what most manuals say to use. So uh, I use it pretty universally. So we'll uh, get a little oil in all these oil cups and then turn them all on so that they're uh, oiling. Now the way you turn these oil cups on is there's a little lever on the top and you flip it up and that actually opens a metering valve. You can adjust that metering valve by this little thumb screw uh, right here that kind of opens and closes that valve. Makes it drip faster or slower depending on what you want. And you can look down, there's a sight glass up on the bottom here. And what it does is it's just going to drip every you know few seconds and depending on how you adjust this little screw right here will depend on how fast it's dripping down in that machine and normally on this stuff you just want it to drip you know once every really and truly once you kind of get them lubricated about once a minute is about all you need for most most shafts uh, otherwise you're gonna be running oil all over the place in addition to the oil cups, we also have a bunch of these uh, little flip-up cups. And uh, I want to make sure all of these get oiled. These have an oil line that runs down to some specific place uh, up in the gearbox or whatever. And there's a bunch of them on this machine. So I'm going to go around and, like I said, just put a little bit of oil in all of them. Make sure that we've got some lubrication going on here. All right, here we go. See what happens. 
Looks good. Engage the clutch. And I think we got, yeah, these are out of gear. All right. Looks good. Getting everything in gear here. I want to lower my head down. And that's coming down. Good job. I see my head's coming down under power feed here. Trying to remember all the nuances that run in this thing. There we go, there's our spindle turning. You got some speeds in here that you can adjust these levers uh, to get them going. And uh, See, uh, there we go. And that'll feed the spindle out. I want the spindle to come back in. That should bring it back out this way. I'm gonna run that back out, I think. Well, we got the motor up and running. Check that off the list. So, uh, like I said before, this machine's kind of been sitting in queue, waiting on me to be able to do some other things to it. Before I could do that, I had to get that motor fixed. And uh, it's honestly been a project that's been on the back burner for over a year now. So now I can kind of get back on to finishing up a couple of other things on this machine uh, to get it ready to use. I've got a project that I need to use it on. It's not a rush, rush job, but it is kind of getting a little bit important. So we need to, we need to get this thing usable. Um, once I get it usable, I want to do some more in-depth restoration on this machine. I want to redo the spindle on it. Uh, it's got a fair amount of wear and a fair amount of slop in it. For the initial job that I'm doing, it's probably not going to matter. In fact, it isn't going to matter. Uh, but I want to get some precision into this. So we're going to probably rebuild that spindle and eventually probably rescrape the, the bed uh, to get it where it's running nice and true and just try to turn this into a good quality machine. Even though this machine is over 100 years old, it's still good quality American iron and it's definitely something that can be used and used well. And uh, that's kind of my game plan. So guys, with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments greatly appreciated. Greatly helps out the channel and the analytics. Hit the bell icon or ring that bell over there so you get notification when new videos are posted. And big, big thank you to all my Patreons out there who help support the site financially. It really kind of helps us to be able to do a lot of things we do and keep on making these videos. So uh, with that, as always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. Mm -hmm.